from the Taiwan front to the Tibetan uh, plateau. Okay. No, oh, yes. And they have downwind targeting right there. Look at, look, look at how well placed they are. They can take down almost any target with a short range. North of the wind there, they are covered most of the targets with a short range ballistic missiles. Their longer range missiles from Zining and Jengdu bases, just, just north on the Sichua Yunnan, right there, the base 856 or 356 something, they name it, their, their nomenclatura as such, with the strategic forces, is the Dongfang 21 Mod 2s uh, from the Zining and Jengdu bases. Take care of this with the targets in the peninsula India. Each of the warheads, and now I'm getting into the strategic aspects, our deterrent aspect. Each of the warheads is a one megaton. The Dongfeng 3s and 5s are 3.3 .3 megaton. What do we have by way of a proven tested mission at 20 kiloton fission? That's the only thing we have. That's a firecracker. Deterrence, I've always written, uh, propagated to a point where now it's becoming cliche. It's nice to know. I hear it said, repeated to me by chiefs of staff, you know, my, as they say, my students at NDC or these places where this came up. And then they kind of shamefacedly suddenly heard it from me when you said it. But deterrence is a mind game. Deterrence, mind game essentially means you're playing on people's fears and sensitivities or whatever it is. And when you say you have one megaton incoming, think of impact on the political masters, Indian masters, you know, our political masters in Delhi, mm -hmm. who are spooked by far less. Think of what it means. Well, think of it. A prime, you are the prime minister. And the Chinese open up their uh, uh, IRBM uh, Dongfang 21s for firing, ostensibly fire in a crisis. What will you do? Will they all bring them on? Will you do that? No! Because you will say, what do we have to do? The SFC commander says, oh, we have a 20 kiloton. What's 20 kiloton? Even if you have 10 missiles on target, how many missiles? You don't have that many missiles that you have 10 to create a, a megaton strength uh, thing. Payload delivery. That's what people don't understand. And this is the problem with, was the problem with Kesu is the problem with Subramanian's acolytes in the Indian press and media, they don't use their brains. We are not talking of the start of nuclear war and then certain, you know, sustenance of nuclear war. We are talking about the start of nuclear war. Where once the balloon goes up, everything is gone. It doesn't then matter ki aap kaise nuanced aap ki reaction hogi and all these nonsense is going to go up, it's all over. The game is up. All the strategizing has to be done prior to the first launch to preempt, prevent, dissuade, deter the first launch. If that we are not capable of doing because we have a thermonuclear weapon warhead that is a fizzle, you all know that. That's the, one of the great things that animates your discussions in Bharat Raksha. <laughs> what will S2, S2 and so on? This is the real problem. Santanam, who came out in September of 2009, and incidentally, I'm very glad these were uh, Chatham, uh, you know, Chatham House rules that were prevailing. They were so announced. Except there was the Hindi journalist, language journalist from uh, wherever, Bhopal or something, uh, who didn't understand what Chathamam Sus meant. And he went with a Santanam story. I provoked Santanam into saying, so, are you saying, Santi, that, he says, yeah, I'm saying that it was a fizzle. Mm -hmm. This fellow carried it. The news broke. It was a wonderful thing. I went and you know, congratulated that fellow. He didn't understand what was happening. You know, why was such an dama? You know, Santanam had told me in my previous books that it was a fizzle. I said, why don't you come out and say it? Why can't I attribute it to? So in all my books you'll find that. The high official, the RDO official was in the test regime, the testing regime, saying it was a fizzle. But there are other signs as well. The rock morphology, the concentration of lithium, all suggesting that the thermonuclear fuel had not all conflagrated. All kinds of other things. 
So the kind of seismic cross data and so on that Ramana and then subsequently Kakorka and everybody else is saying, oh, it's enough, enough. You know, to me it doesn't make sense at all. And yet, and yesterday, at dinner, oh, not yesterday, the day before, uh, at the main dinner, before the start of the Christian University seminar, guess who finally agreed with me? Ashley Tellis, who was there and, uh, you know, jockeying for the nuclear D and who was the advisor as you were there to the US ambassador in Delhi. But, you know, they're sitting there. He says, and I'm glad Raja Menon was on the same table. When he said, Bharat, I said, we are going to test what I think you heard me say, Jagdish. The evening before, he said, you are right or wrong. You have to test again. And his point was, the American reaction will not be as inimical as you think which is a good thing. And I said, it doesn't really matter what the American reaction is. I don't care if the Americans impose sanctions. Americans are not going to be the ones who are going to face the brunt of the Chinese weapons, assuming things come to a, a fearful end. We look after our interests. Americans are not going to be there, no matter what they say. So that's what I said yesterday, and I think Jagdish heard me. All talk of hedging, double hedge strategy and all this nonsense is basically a misnomer for getting out of line of fire when the firing starts. Up to the point of firing, everybody says, yes, you know, we are counter hedging, we are coalition partners, when it comes down to it, no one's going to come to your help. You're going to be alone, this be China. And we have to ensure that even as a unitary entity, we'll be able to first of all dissuade, then deter, and if all in phase, you know, destroy China. Destroy China's wealth producing capability. So our Arihant subs will be entirely, I have said that our patrol stations should be off South China Sea and off the Yellow Sea on the side. And we can then birth to the Chinese. Hopefully we are talking to the Japanese to get, give our Arihan's birthing facilities there so it doesn't have to come back or, you know, we can just fly our crews and get Arihan back on station. We can take out the entire wealth producing. We'll re reduce China. They reduce us too. Yes, but we'll reduce them as well. We'll destroy China. The wealth producing centers. We'll reduce them, China to nothing. We'll be reduced to, no question about it. But the question is, are the Chinese going to go scot free? They are not. But we'll have to test again to get a thermonuclear right, to get a mind game right mm -hmm. before any of the firing starts, which it won't if we get a thermonuclears in. With a one megaton, everybody knows what happens. And generally what then that means is that we'll have to test. But this government is not going to, it doesn't have the guts to do it, nor the will. Hopefully next government will. Then we'll see. Then we equalize the situation a lot more. Because we now have a situation where our missile thing becoming very accurate at maximum ranges. Very accurate. Mm -hmm. It's for you to guess what the CDP is. Mm -hmm. Let me just say it's very good. Enough to give sleepless nights to any adversary, even on hard targets. What's a hard target? 100 PSI would be tremendous. Let me just say that if we have the thermonuclear capability to that kind of accuracy, you know, no target in China is safe. Then there will be peace. But up to that point, we have to cultivate a Tibet guard. We have to begin to now begin training the Thai Tibetan exile community to wage war in Tibet. We have to get out of our sitting on high saddle, you know, no morality or that crap, because they have misused, they have been funding our Northeastern rebels for 40 years. And they have done nothing. We too can practice the Chinese way of doing things, which I appreciate, I admire. You talk punch shield, but you do something else. Exactly what Cortilia said you should do. You don't have to look to Sun Tzu. And Cortilia, incidentally, was merely codified all this 
the thinking that went on for the past 3,000 years. He mainly codified it in 322 BC, which is what we don't understand. It's not as if he thought it, he mainly codified it, put it on text. So, I don't know whether you read my, uh, the first chapter in the very big internet page about nuclear weapons and Indian security, it's precisely the roots of hard VR politics is an Indian culture. We have lost it. Mm -hmm. We are hard people. We have become an effete people now. And if I'm sorry to say for vegetarians here, I call myself a big way big mm -hmm. You sacrificed cows and yeah. bulls and you ate them. Yeah. You also the vigorous culture. There were no inhibitions. So much so that our society is rambunctious culture. Violent culture. Our society is still violent, isn't it? I mean, look at newspapers, all you do is have a newspaper, how violent it is socially, how unrestful it is. And then for us to pretend that we are a pacific country, Gandhi and Gandhi is dead and gone. He never left an impress on us, except in political, rhetorical terms, I'm sorry to say. But we have to rediscover that hardness in us.